watching ESPN First Take, presented by Bass Pro Shops. Aaron Rodgers is one is is probably the best quarterback in NFL. But quarterback is the only position in the NFL where you can be mediocre and get paid. If I had like the stats of a uh, Ryan Tannehill, you know, I, the most games I ever won was seven. That, how could you get a hundred million for that? You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, you know, you sitting at home and there's the breaking news and it says that Brian Hoyer is the quarterback of the Texas. I'm like, who cares? <laughs> I mean, you take a guy like Sam Bradford. He's never played really in the last three years, but he's made more money than any uh, most guys in the NFL. Then quarterbacks get protected more than any other player. I mean, he gets hit in his knees and he's about to cry. <laughs> hit me in my legs. I mean, like, everybody gets hit in their legs. Every place somebody tries to hit me in my legs. So what makes him different? What makes his life better than mine? He gets up with a sad face, like like the world just ended because he got hit. I respect Tom Brady because when Tom Brady gets hit, you know, he gets up and like, good job, good hit. And he gets back in the huddle and he holds his, he holds his own like a man. And he got guys in the NFL crying because they get hit. Oh, sucks, sucks, hit me. He is hysterical. Chicago, during the draft, I was with the Bennett brothers doing some segments. The guys had me dying laughing, the two of them, the entire time. Antonio, AP still here. Do you, do you like what he said, though? <laughs> He's honest. Uh, you got to yeah. give him that point. And, and, I, and I think every defensive player feels that way. That, you know, the quarterback, they get all the calls. You can't hit them in certain areas. You got about a 12-inch window to hit the quarterback, and it better not be too hard. But the point about them being the highest paid, look, it's only 32 of them. Yeah. And every year in college football, you get a good handful of quarterbacks, and only two or three are going to pan out. Mm -hmm. So there's 64 star defensive ends in the National Football League, and you, re you rarely lose a game because a defensive end had a bad game, unless it's a certain play or just throughout the, the game, it happens. But if you got a bad quarterback, you got a bad quarterback play or average, below average quarterback play, you're going home every January. <laughs> December, you <laughs> off back. You tell the kids, get ready. We're moving on to the next vacation home. Yeah. So I, I get this point, and, and, we, and I, I think all defense players, we laugh at it. All NFL players, we get it. But the bottom line is, you got to pay the franchise quarterback. And again, you're going to pay the average quarterback elite money because of just the number and the system and the way things are played out in the National Football League. But what I love more importantly is he's speaking the truth. He's speaking what a lot of guys want to say, and he's and well, nothing. I give him credit with Tom Brady because I feel the same way. Mm. We had our battles in the Super Bowl and yes, at Week 17 did. and throughout my career. He was one of the only quarterbacks, along with Phillip Rivers, Big Ben, that when they hit, when you hit him, he said, good job. Like, they're like, bring it on. And that motivates you even more. There's a lot of other quarterbacks that every time they're sitting there flopping, looking at the referee, and that you don't respect. Yep. Stephen A., there are four guys that this industry is going to need to worry about because they're coming for people's jobs. <laughs> That's the McCourty twins and Michael and Martellus Bennett. Mm -hmm. I love them brothers. They're honest, they're straightforward, they let you know where they stand, they don't pull punches. And as far as I'm concerned, in all my years, the, the few times that I've communicated with them both, there's not a deceitful word in their body. They say what is real, and I respect it. Do I think that Michael Bennett, to some degree, is a little bit misguided? Yes. But only from the perspective that, and I've had this debate with Ray Lewis as well, and I'm sure I'd probably have it with Antonio Pierce right now, because defensive players, they're like, look, man, these dudes are men just like us. We got to be subjected to this. So should they. The only reason I disagree with that when it comes to a quarterback is because you're out there throwing the football. You're at the mercy of the defender coming your way in terms of protection. It's not like you get to stand up and fight. It's not like you get to sit up there and block with them or tussle with them. You are literally helpless in terms of absorbing and taking the punishment that is aimed in your direction. So the notion that the quarterback should be treated the same as anybody else on the football field I respectfully disagree with that because they're not in a position where they get to defend themselves most of the time. And I do believe that the league is right to protect them to some degree. Do I believe the league is excessive? Yes, I do. I think some of these calls are incredibly ticky tack. I think it really rubs me the wrong way. I, I, you shouldn't be hitting going at a guy's knees. Uh, particularly they're throwing a the football and you're trying to take their legs out on purpose. You certainly shouldn't slam them on their head or knock them upside the head. But outside of that, 
I think it's fair game. If you have an opportunity to pop them silly, it's exactly what you should do. I definitely believe that. And I do believe that the league is excessive in their protection of the quarterback. And that's why Michael is a little bit misguided, because I think his ire is aimed at quarterbacks when, in fact, it should be aimed at a league that is excessive in their protection of that mm. quarterback. But why are they excessive? Because even Michael has to admit it's a quarterback's game. And when you lose one to injury, it really hurts the product that the yep. NFL puts on the field. By the way, That's when, fair. when, when That's I read cool. this last night, there's not much that makes me laugh out loud. I laughed out loud three times just yeah. reading before I heard it on Ryan Tannehill and Brian Hoyer. That's not breaking news. <laughs> you know, that's funny. And Sam Bradford. And you know what? You, you made the point, well, there, there are only 32 of these guys. But the truth is, there's really only like 15 or 16 of these guys that can really play, that can really do it at the highest level. You can't, as you say, you're going really? home without one. Well, 15 or 16 that you can count on to take you. I, I, don't, take yeah, I, was, I was getting ready to say you. I don't think oh, there's maybe that not man. even that high. Well, you could argue that. I don't think that. there's that. You, you could argue. You could. Right. I'm, I'm with you. So the point he's making to me between the lines is it's clearly the most overpaid position in all of sports. It's not even close because Sam Bradford gets $50 million to sign this is before the rookie quarterback cap, yep. you know, the rookie yep. cap. Mm -hmm. But he got $50 million coming out of the University of Oklahoma to sign. $50 million? And he's done what? Nothing. You know, he's done what, what Sam Bradford, he's 18, 30, and 1. His QBR over those three years is 40 on scale of 1 to 100. He, he's below average, and he got $50 million just to sign. Well, so, Martel, I mean, uh, Michael is right about that one. And then you look at, you know, Ryan Tannehill, I'm not a fan. I wasn't a fan yep. before he got drafted. And they just gave him $100 million. Well, is he going to be, to Stephen A's point, a top 15 or top 12 quarterback? I don't think so. So, Michael is right about that. Ryan Tannehill got a hundred million dollars, but you know what happens? These teams are damned if they do, damned if they don't. Mm -hmm. So they're going to replace Ryan Tannehill with what? College quarterback. They don't know. They mm -hmm. don't know because they can't trust that. So they they see flashes from Ryan, and every once in a while he has a pretty good game. And you say, you know what? He might. No, he won't. No, he won't. He'll never be that guy to me. I hope I'm wrong about that for their sake. But but again, Michael is right about how overpaid so many of these quarterbacks are. Steven, I want to go back to a point you made because you said Please. something about a quarterback. We should never go after a quarterback. A defensive player should never have the quarterback's knees. But you're a linebacker and you're running. You got a running back like DeMarco Murray running downhill at you. And I got a 350-pound lineman that dies at my knees when I'm trying to make a tackle. Where is my protection as a defensive player? No, 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 no. I don't want you to misconstrue what I'm saying. I understand if you have no choice because in the throes of action, you know, that's where it lends itself. I'm talking about when you're literally targeting it on purpose to debilitate the quarterback or anybody else out there you on the field. Hard Remember, to tackle the National Football League? Anytime you can get a, uh, another grown man on the ground, you did a hell of a job. So I don't care if it's a quarterback. I don't care if Sam Bradford's, he's frail. He's a tall quarterback. Now, Suggs is a huge man. I get it. He chose to go that route. But guess what? If he had hit him in the head, not only would he got flagged. I agree. Mm -hmm. Not only would he got flagged, but he would have a big fine. He would but have. Which is, why, which is why I'm telling you, Antonio, I point the finger at the league as opposed to you guys as defensive players. But I want you to also understand, I am not in any way trying to say that it's wrong to tackle a quarterback or any other player at their knees. I'm saying to you, it's a difference between doing it and targeting it. If you remember that kid Swearinger years ago, a couple of years ago when he hit Dustin Keller in a preseason game, he said, you know, if I hit him in the head, I would, I would get fine. But damn, you literally dove and lunged at his knees. You couldn't have lunged at his chest. You couldn't have lunged at his stomach. You couldn't have lunged at his waist. Come on, bro. All I'm saying to you is that there, I'm not in any way, again, I didn't play like you guys did on the NFL level. I, I defer to your expertise. But I'm, I'm saying don't tell me that you haven't seen guys that will go out there and literally target those areas, and it ain't to avoid fines. It's because you literally want to shatter a dude's leg and take him out of there or something like that. I'm just saying something like that is something that you should be striving to avoid. That's all I mean by that. If you can't yeah. help it, you can't <laughs> help it because you're in the throes of action, and we understand that. 
but you know better than me that there are guys that can't help it because in the throes of action, that's something that occurs, and there are guys that literally went out there targeting something like that. You know that's the, you know that happens. Yeah, and I don't have a problem with that because that, that's the sport you chose to play. That sport hurts. Football ain't for everybody. And if you don't want to get hit in the knees, you don't want to get hit in the chest, you don't want to have to get hit accidentally in the head, don't sign up for football. Mom and dad, put these guys in Little League baseball. But, but whoa, 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 whoa. I got to stop sport. you because you just said it. You just said it. If you're going to sign up, sign up. If you're going to get accidentally hit in the head, we ain't saying accidental. That's all I'm saying. Right. That's the issue. Whatever happens, happens. I get that. But it's a difference between something that's accidental, something that's in the throes of action, and something that is, is, is significantly and viciously intentional. You know as well as I do, if somebody sit up there and that well not well, not with you, not with that head of yours, because you'll be all right. But I'm just saying to you, if somebody targeted, if somebody targeted your your, your knees, that's entirely different than you getting tackled in the knees. If somebody targeted it, you'd be up ready to fight because you'll say, wait a minute, there's a code that comes with this. We're trying to hurt you, we're trying to do something to you, but at the same time, if it's something that could ultimately damage your career and it was excessive and unnecessary and intentional, you are going to take that differently. That's something that just happens within the course of action. You know that, AP. Oh, yeah. We swing it. <laughs> we got to <All> right. fight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there. But Michael Bennett, absolutely hysterical, and he really stuck the landing there with some of those examples. Has he been on first take yet? No, Martell says. Martellus. Twice. Okay. Antonio, <clears throat> thank you so much for being with Michael, us. Michael, come on. That was fun. Yeah. Go Long Beach Poly, yep. the Jack Good Rabbits. job, AP. Yep. All right. Good stuff. We stay with Seattle coming up. Marshawn Lynch is a man of few words.